Hello and welcome back to Tiki Tuesday. That's right, it's another Tiki Tuesday. Glad to see everybody here. Looks like we got quite a few people watching tonight, so glad to see you. My name is Brian Miller. I'm an artist for Star Wars and Archer and DC Comics and all kinds of fun stuff. And I really appreciate you guys joining me tonight. And uh, we're gonna be drawing a tiki bar called the Grass Skirt from San Diego tonight. So. Uh, maybe one you've not heard of. It's a little off the beaten path. It's hidden. Uh, we're going to be checking that one out tonight. Good to see you, Monique. Thanks for joining us tonight. And thanks to all of you. Here's a cheers to everyone. Got the mermaid mug tonight. Look at that. Cheers, everybody. Happy Tiki Tuesday. Mm. Great to see you, Monique. I got your message that you received. Um, your artwork. Uh, I think that was the Back to the Future pieces that you received, right? And I'm glad to hear that they arrived safe and undamaged and that no one stole it off your porch. We've had that happen to a few people recently, which is no fun. So I was really happy to hear that everything showed up and came through for you. Um, it's just been great to see everyone's reaction to that artwork and how many people are really excited by it and just want to like, you know, just really celebrate it, you know, the, whether they're fans of the DeLorean or they're fans of Back to the Future or both. It's just been really fun to see everyone's reaction. So thanks to everybody for your support on that. And if you're a Collectors Club member, you should have received an email blast today with some uh, Halloween artwork and some horror movie artwork that's available now. So um, I, I know we've got a couple orders in today already from people, I really appreciate that. So if you're ready to decorate, get your decor ready for Halloween, or maybe you're just a horror film fan, uh, there's some new stuff on octopolis.com for you to check out for sure. And, uh, and a few more things coming too. So there's definitely a few more tricks up my sleeve before Halloween arrives, so stay tuned for that. But I really appreciate everyone who ordered something, whether it was the DeLorean, Back to the Future artwork, or if it was some horror movie art today. I uh, really appreciate your support, so thank you for that. Uh, Monique says, yep, I got, got to get them framed. Jeff was outside cleaning up the yard when they came, so the mailman just handed it to him. Oh, that's perfect, right? You don't, nothing's worse than when those poster tubes, even the even the pyramid-shaped ones when they get trampled or run over or squashed in a door or something. So, um, let's see, this place, the, um, the Grass Skirt. Let's talk about the Grass Skirt. The Grass Skirt opened in 2016 in San Diego. Um, and it's a speakeasy-style uh, tiki bar hidden behind a poke restaurant. Um, so they have cocktails and then mostly their own creations, but they also have some seafood uh, available. So it is a tiki bar and restaurant. And they have um, carved wooden uh, tiki post. Uh, they're by a, a local legendary tiki carver named Tiki Bosco. So really cool. Um, and then the part that I'm drawing is this, this element is echoed twice. And so it's a fire pit, which is what I'm drawing, big fireplace, huge fireplace. Um, and then also inside, this is out on the patio, inside they have one of the booths. It's like a scaled up version of this tiki mask and you actually sit inside of the mouth. So it's really cool. Looks like it'd be a great place to visit. And I like that they're making their own cocktails. Like they're, they're doing some of the traditional tiki drinks, but they said a lot of their, their own concoctions, which is kind of cool. You don't always see that all the time. <laughs> Monique says, my mailman knows better. Well, that's good. You got your got your mail carrier trained to uh, not destroy your packages, right? <laughs> we should all be so lucky. We should all have a mail carrier who actually cares about the packages. I know some of them do, some of them don't. So it's good to hear that yours does, <laughs> right? It's like nothing worse than those packages come and they're just sort of like beat up and disheveled and destroyed. 
I actually had that as like one of my photo memories the other day was we had done a Kickstarter years ago and uh, people would just send us the most horrific photos of their books that were destroyed in the mail and we're like, you know, these were in like, you know, supposed like tear proof and crush proof packaging. But let me tell you, the, the, some of these postal people, they found a way to destroy these things that were supposedly impervious. So you know how it goes. But I'm glad that yours arrived safely. That's really good to hear. We usually have pretty good luck with those with the different kinds of tubes. Uh, they're they're fairly robust, which is nice. But yeah, the artwork it's been nice to uh, you know after after eight months of working on that big project, um, it's been nice to get back into the swing of things. And start getting some fresh art out to all of you and seeing you get excited about it gets me more excited you know and so then I'm motivated to do even more so it's nice to to have that relationship with all of you and I'm probably the most motivated I've been in a long time let me tell you so Working on some really cool Ghostbusters inspired artwork right now. Uh, I hope to be able to show you in October. And uh, just can't wait to see everybody's reaction to that. I'm really, really hyped up for this new Ghostbusters film. I think that, that final trailer they released just looks so good, you know? Just, it just looks incredible. And uh, that's got me really excited for Ghostbusters Afterlife. Especially that little, a little bit at the end of the trailer where somebody picks up the phone and says, we're closed. I got all the feels from that one, let me tell you. All the feels. I was like, yes, I'm so ready for this movie. Uh, Monique says, those male people saw Indestructible and they're like, challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's probably the thinking sometimes, right? Just like, you say Indestructible and I say, have you met my mail truck? It can run over all sorts of things. So we've got our little Tiki Hula Girl down here. Hey, thanks for joining us, Pierre. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with us on another Tiki Tuesday. We're drawing the cool Tiki fireplace from the grass skirt in San Diego tonight. And just chatting about all things Tiki. Join a nice cocktail. Uh, and don't forget, I've got some uh, Tiki Tango mug update news later. So don't let me forget to share that with you guys. In the meantime, cheers. Mm. Well, I wonder where Quinch Press and Catherine and Whitney and some of our regulars are tonight. It's not going to be a Tiki Tuesday if everybody doesn't stop by and say hi tonight. Yeah, we'll just start roughing this guy out a little bit. Hey, I saw a great uh, heist movie on Netflix uh, called The Vault. Anybody seen that yet? I think it's been out for a little while, but it's a, uh, it's a Spanish film, but it's in English. It's not Spanish language. It's just made in Spain. And it's one of the cooler heist films I've seen in a while. And it's um, kind of has some clever thinking behind it. Like they're using the FIA World Cup as like cover for the, the heist. And um, 
they have to get like an engineer, like a young kid who's like a brilliant engineer to like figure out this ancient device that secures the vault so that they can break in and uh, get back what may be their property, maybe the Spanish government's property. It's, it's disputed in the film, so they kind of, you know, are they really the good guys? Are they thieves? That'll be up for you to decide. But uh, it was cool. It was a cool film. And it had a good good amount of action. Uh, and I really dug it. I thought it was really cool. So if you get a chance to see that one, it's called The Vault. And it's on Netflix right now. And uh, definitely worth your time. Like if you like a good heist film, a little bit of cloak and dagger kind of stuff, um, it, was, it was well worth it. I enjoyed it. And Christy thought it was entertaining too, so you know if she likes it, it's it's worthy because she she doesn't tolerate a lot of junk, you know. She's she's she can be a little picky. So you know if she likes it, it's pretty good. Just doing a little wood grain on these on these guys, get them in here. Now I'm going to try to keep my energy up tonight, but I'll let you guys know this is my third stream of the day. So I had a uh, one of our Comet Coloring courses today, and then I just got, like literally minutes ago, just got off an hour-long business Zoom. Uh, so this is stream number three for me. So it may not be the longest stream I've ever done, but we'll... We'll have fun, talk about Tiki and art, our favorite movies and comics. But let me know what you've been watching. Are you, are you checking out any shows on the streaming services right now? Anything catch your eye? I know one that I've really been into is the uh, uh, Behind the Attraction on Disney+. Plus. Man, I'm loving that show. I mean, I, I'm into all things Imagineering anyway. But, um, you know, it's a little goofy, but they they really give you some cool information and behind-the-scenes footage that you may not have seen before. And, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it. Um, I, so I haven't seen them all yet, but I've seen quite a few. Really enjoy the Haunted Mansion one. Because uh, I just love the Haunted Mansion anyway. But I actually thought the one on the Disney Castles was like way more inter interesting and entertaining than I thought it was going to be. Just because there's so much more story that you know about everything that goes into those castles than you would have thought. And it was, uh, I thought it was quite fascinating. So, um, Of course, they did one on Jungle Cruise because the movie's out, so that made sense. And anyway, it's been it's been really good, really good so far. So, if you get a chance, I highly recommend that one. It's been uh, it's been really fun to watch. And for those of you just joining us, I see a couple people are are getting on the stream here. Uh, feel free to hop on the chat if you want. Uh, we're broadcasting live on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. And this, the chat is on Twitch. So if you want to chat, get on Twitch. Look for Octopolis. You'll find me there. Let me know what, what Tiki Cocktail you're enjoying tonight and what, what shows and movies you're watching. I'm always looking for a good recommendation, you know. Because I'll just watch the same stuff over and over. I'm like, Disney, Star Wars, whatever the movie du jour is, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> there we go. Starting to kind of bring this little tiki guy to life here. He's got a... A lot of little details and stuff, but that's all right. By the time we get our, we'll get him all linked up and then grab some markers and throw some details on him. It'll be pretty cool. I can already see this as be a fun one to turn into like a big print with like lots of cool lighting coming off the fireplace. And I 
maybe make our tiki girl here have a little bit more going on with her. But yeah, the behind the traction is good. I was trying to think of which ones I've seen. So I've seen Haunted Mansion, Jungle Cruise, Castles. I thought there was one more that I've watched. I've been watching them in order. Hmm. I can't think of which one it is I'm, I'm skipping, but regardless, they're really good. You got to see them. I kind of watch them like at lunchtime, so something kind of easy, easy to watch and take in. Just kind of imagine she's casting a little bit of shadow here from the fireplace, you know, it's kind of stretching out long, long shadows. That kind of thing. Keep it kind of fresh looking. All right. So I don't know if any of you guys have, uh, did you see the news about Norm MacDonald passing away? I was kind of shocked to hear that. I guess I didn't realize that he had been diagnosed with cancer like nine or 10 years ago, but had, had not really made that too public or at least not too prevalent. So I had no idea, kind of, Kind of crazy news, I thought, to hear that he had passed. Uh, Monique says, yeah, I just saw it about an hour ago. Yeah, right? That was It was unexpected. I mean, it's not really like someone when you know that they're sick and that they might be struggling or dying, but I was really taken back by that. Hey, David, thank you for joining us. Good to see you. So yeah, that was crazy. Um, you know, he's one of those comedians that was just so out there, you know, and like, I think everybody has like their, their favorite thing that he did, whether it was, you know, him playing Burt Reynolds on Jeopardy on SNL or some of the movies that he was in. Oh, thanks for cheering 100 bits, Monique. Thank you. Really appreciate that. You know, or um, some of the talk shows that he did, or being the weekend update anchor on Saturday Night Live. I mean, he just, he did so many different things and seemed to always bring, like, the sense of irreverence with him wherever he went, you know. And he definitely wasn't afraid to shock or offend anybody, you know. And he he wasn't afraid to be the, the butt of the joke either so he could he could sort of dish it out and he could take it just as good as he gave so you know i think he's one of those comedians that he wasn't like maybe an a-list celebrity and not everyone knew his name but uh, i think you know he did have an impact on the comedy world and especially on saturday night live so he will definitely be missed Alright, this is when I have to remember to work from left to right because I'm right-handed and this ink will smudge and smear. So as much as I want to hop around this thing, I've got to stick to it. Seriously, Monique, thanks for the cheer. I appreciate that. Help me remember to run the credits later too so we can see your name in the credits. Yeah, that was some shocking news. So we'll, we'll see how the world reacts to that, or at least the comedy world. I'm sure everybody's checking out all of his like comedy bits on YouTube and stuff. 
kind of going back and refreshing themselves. This is such a great tiki idol. Like I love how big the mouth is open for the fireplace inside. It's just such a great design. It's always fun to get to get to illustrate these like great classic tiki designs, you know. I find it really enjoyable to just, you know, take something that exists out there in the real world and reimagine it as like a, you know, in the form of like a two-dimensional drawing, you know. Try to come up with interesting ways to to translate all of that. Think about how some of the light and shadow will work. I mean, can you imagine being here and the fire's roaring and the tiki drinks are flowing? It'd be a pretty good time, right? Monique says, it's looking cool already. Oh, thank you, Monique, I appreciate that. Yeah, I kinda, I felt really inspired about this one today, so. Um, you know, it may not be the most, you know, it's not full color and all that kind of stuff, but I think it's, I think it's a fun one. Hey, there's Quinch Press, good to see you. Aloha, my friend. So this is the grass skirt in San Diego. Have you been there, Quinch Press? I have not. This is um, the fireplace on their patio, but they also have the same tiki larger inside as like a booth you can sit inside. So it's pretty cool, but very good to see you. So I was just saying that this is my third stream of the day. So I'm gonna try to keep my energy up, but you guys will have to help me, help me keep keep things moving. Because I've been, I've been hard at it today, let me tell you. Uh, Quinch says, I've been there. I went with Mark and Mary's. Oh, great. That's fantastic news. Well, how was it? Because I saw it, uh, some reviews that said that uh, A, that it's hidden and it's kind of like speakeasy style. B, that they had good seafood. And C, that a lot of their drinks are their own original creations. So let us know what you thought of the place. And guys, don't forget, I have a tiki mug update tonight. So don't let me forget to talk about that. All right, there we go. Drawing straight lines. Okay, Quinch, you gotta you gotta give us the scoop, man. You can't hold out on us. Gotta gotta give us the real the real info on the grass skirt. We want the deets, man. Man, he's gonna hold out on us, I can tell. Quinch Press is like, I will tell you nothing and you will like it. I just love this guy's face. It's like, ooga chucka, ooga chucka. Uh, Quinch Press says, there's a takeout place where you check in and then you enter through a walk-in freezer door. So yes, it's very speaky. Easy-ish. Oh, you go through the freezer door. That's pretty cool. I've been to some cool speakeasy entrances, but that's the freezer door. That's pretty good. That's a nice twist. And <laughs> Quinch is like, I'm just typing. I'm not holding out. Well, let us know what you thought about the drinks and or the food if you tried it. And what part of San Diego is it in? Is it 
is it walkable from the gas lamp or is it like farther out? Because it just says online that it's in the, let me find what it says here. It says it's in the Pacific Beach neighborhood, but I don't, I don't live in San Diego, so I don't know where the Pacific Beach neighborhood is. I'm like, I just, all I know is San Diego Comic Con and the gas lamp district and how far things are away from that is my ability to measure distance time and space in San Diego. Speaking of which, if you guys saw Apple's iPhone 13 event today, looked like they shot part of that near and around the San Diego Convention Center. So it seemed like a love letter to California. It looks like they shot different parts of it in different parts of the state. So it was cool to be like, oh, I see the Comic-Con building in the background. Or like, you know, oh, I've been to that that building back there. That, oh, I stayed in that hotel. So it's kind of fun to watch. I like this guy. He's fun. Nice little bit of fire going there. Fire in the fireplace, right? Um, Quinch says they did have a bunch of their own drinks. The drinks were all pretty good, wonderfully decorated. Ooh, that sounds good. Well, I mean, I, I saw they had the big booth. I saw the, the patio, a, a few other photos. It looks pretty cool. Oh, man. It's tasty. I like this idea of like the big cracked tiles in the floor. It gives us that look of like a volcanic something or other, which is pretty groovy. Uh, Quinch Press says Pacific Beach is just south of La Jolla. Oh, La Jolla, well, well, fancy. Hoity toity, I see. But definitely not walkable from Comic-Con, is what you're telling me. That's what I'm hearing. Those are the words that I'm hearing. Not walkable from the gas lamp. That's okay. Now, I take it that... Um, what's it called? Not Hidden Idol. Uh, What's the, what's the big one there in uh, San Diego Quench? False Idol, right, thanks. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, Dr. Taco, good to see you. Yeah, False Idol, thanks for chiming in, I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and Dr. Taco MD says, so it's pretty far from Indianapolis then. Yes, it's a little bit, a little bit for sure. Uh, yeah, Quench says, so, uh, Grass skirt is definitely not walkable from the gas lamp, but false idol is, yeah. So, I told you guys, this is my third stream of the day. My brain is just totally mush. Especially because one stream was an art stream, and or art instruction, and one was like businessy stuff with spreadsheets and whatnot, and so it's just, it's just too much for an artist like me to, to take all that in. And, my brain is just destroyed. But my mood is good and my creativity is good. So that's what matters most, right? Uh, Dr. Taco MD says, I got you on the tiki bars around the country if you forget the names. Good job, Dr. Taco. I appreciate that. Especially when I'm, I, I, will, I will forget all the names while I'm streaming. Even if I know them, when I start streaming, all that stuff just, it just fades away. I just get focused on the artwork and chatting with you guys. And then I'm like, wait, what's that thing? What's that bar? Who's that actor? It all just goes away. And that gives you guys a chance to participate. You can be like, hey, dummy, it's this person. It's this tiki bar. Uh, Monique says, I'm supposed to be in Escondido mid-October. We'll see how that works out. Oh, yeah. 
you've got family out there, right, Monique? Dr. Taco says, Gavin Smith does the art for the Inferno Room. Ooh, that's awesome. That is awesome. I love that. We just about got the inks worked out here. And then I can start doing some shading and some details and whatnot. We're getting it. Got a little wood grain and stuff to do here. Uh, I think once I get the inks done, before I start the markers, we'll, we'll have a little update about Tiki Mugs. I got some Tiki Mug news to share with you guys. At least a little bit. A little bit of Tiki Mug news. Maybe not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, Monique says, yes, she does have family. I thought so. I thought so. Well, good. I hope you get to see your family. I hope they're safe. hope everything's going well. Just rough this in a little bit. Um, Google's, uh, Quinch Press says, according to Google, grass skirt would be a little over a three-hour walk for the convention center. Well, that might be just a little too far. Three hours seems just a, a lot to ask. I mean, not that there's not people waiting in line there three hours to get an action figure or a collectible or something, but waiting in line and walking, those are two different skills. Diana, thanks for joining us tonight. Good to see you. Uh, we are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. The chat is on Twitch, so if you want to join the chat, hop on over to twitch.com. Look for Octopolis. Otherwise, just hang out. Enjoy the stream. Draw some tiki art tonight. This is the grass skirt in San Diego. This is at their fireplace. Talking about tiki cocktails we like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Dr. Taco and D says, he's a friend of 20 years and is married to our other bar manager, so we get discounted rates. Ha ha. Uh, the new Star Trek comic comes out soon, I think. Oh, that is good to know. And looks like maybe get a little hiccup in the stream. We'll see about that. Monique's like, ugh, hiccups. <laughs> Dr. Taco and D says, always helps when your buddy is a comic book artist. Save some money. Heck yeah, very sure. And that uh, Star Trek comic, I'm sure, will be fantastic. All right, so before I bust the markers out, well, we'll see. There we go. Looks like we had a little hiccup in the stream, but um, should be back now. It said it was excellent earlier, but you know how that how that goes. So, we have, we have Tiki Mug news. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for the news? The Tipsy Rum Barrel is real. So, Tiki Farm sent me this sample. So, this is the Tipsy Rum Barrel mug. And you guys know we hadn't heard anything about this in a long time. But there it is. It's real. It exists. It exists. Now, it's not for sale yet. Um... Tiki Tango is going to let me know when these are available to order. Um, but they have been made. They are real. They should be in route. Uh, so we'll see when they go on sale. I'll try to get this where you guys can see it. Now, they did this kind of funky blue glaze. It's got some blue in it. It's got some green in it. Uh, but you can see the little Tiki Tango building there and the Tiki Idol. I've got the Tiki Tango words. And, uh, you know, we've got our... Little sea creatures there. Can we see that? We got a starfish. Sea turtle. How cute is the sea turtle? Super cute. And we've got, we've got our little crab. And we've got our seashell. So that along with the Tiki Tango building and all the details, the palm trees and all that kind of stuff. So it turned out pretty cool. They're all got my signature on the bottom there. You can see the Tiki Farm logo. So those are real, they exist. And uh, again, it's on an angle, so your rum barrel is tipsy, if you can see that, right? It'll be leaning at an angle when you've got it set down. And the more of these you drink, I'm sure the tipsier the mug looks too, right? So uh, they exist, it's finally real. 
as soon as I know about availability and ordering and all that stuff, you guys know I will let you know. Um, and Quinch, also we had talked about, is there another color of this or not? I guess originally they had talked about doing two colorways, but because of COVID and everything that was going on, it's gonna be just this glaze. So this blue and green kind of multicolor glaze. Um, you know, I think we had hoped for like one blue and one that was like brown to kind of make the rum barrel color a little bit, but they had done a mug recently that was tans and brown, so they didn't want to have two mugs come out in the same color. So um, it does exist. It's pretty cool. And as soon as I find out availability and where to order and all that, I will let you guys know. So this one's called the Tipsy Rum Barrel, and it was for Tiki Tango in Atlanta. So there's their logo, Tiki Tango. That's the name of the bar. Um, and it should be available soon. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna hold on and wait till like Black Friday or if they're gonna release it earlier than that or not. But as soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. I'll give you the link where to get it and all that kind of stuff. But it does exist, which is really exciting. So Tipsy Rum Barrel from me to you guys coming soon. And then of course, as soon as we have dates on the Witch Doctor's Potion, I'll let you guys know about that too. It's gonna be farther off, I'm sure, because we know how long this one took to get made. All right, so that's exciting, exciting news. We've got one of our mugs made now, which is really kind of cool. Um, Quinch says, since I've missed the last few weeks, I forget if I mentioned this or not, but I was in Portland three weeks ago and made it to Hale Pale, or Hale Pele, whichever one that is, I forget. Uh, also went to Rum Club, though that wasn't a tiki bar. Um, well, let us know about uh, Hale Pele, because I know we, we did art of that one one time, so let us know what you thought about it. If there was something like notable there, was there like one certain cocktail that you really enjoyed there? Um, something special that you would maybe go back for again, that kind of thing. You know, just let us know. Uh, Quench Press says, yay, it's finally done, hooray. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that it, it, it's, it exists, that it's real, because you know, I don't know, we should, we should look, like when, <laughs> When was that first sketch, you know, for for that? it's It's been a while, right? Let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up, guys. Uh, let me get to my Tiki folder here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, okay, Tipsy Rum Barrel for Tiki Tango. Tiki Tango. Let's see. So it looks like the first real design for that was around September 15th. Now, that means I probably did this sketch before then. So at least a, at least a year, yeah. So August, September, so about a year. So it took about a year from, you know, sketching and design uh, until, until it was real, so yeah. It's kind of crazy how, how long it takes to get a tiki mug out, but there it is, it's real. And hopefully it will be available to order very soon so that you guys can all go get one. I'm sure that will make Tiki Tango very happy. And then you'll have one for your collection too, which will be nice. But yeah, thanks guys. I mean, can you believe it? Like when we started this, you know, when we started this Tiki Tuesday thing, who thought that we'd, we'd have like a mug that came out of this? And that's only the first one. Only the first one. So that makes it even more cool that there's, there's, there's more on the horizon. There's more to come, more excitement more tiki goodness. Uh, all right, Quinch, well, when you get a chance, let us know about Holly Polly and what you thought of that. And in the meantime, I wanna know who's watching either Nine Perfect Strangers or Only Murders in the Building. Both of those are on Hulu. And some friends turned us on to the only murders in the building with uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short and Selena Gomez. And it's a little corny, but it's like a good kind of corny, I think. It's like, 
It's like the kind of corny you kind of buy into and have fun with, if that makes sense. But I have to say that like Steve Martin and Martin Short look like they're having a blast in there. I don't really know anything about Selena Gomez, but um, she's doing a fine job. And they're definitely, you know, having fun with this idea of like a murder mystery podcast. But where it's all kind of happening in real time instead of like, you know, 20 years later or something. Um, Dr. Taco MD says, I didn't see any of you at our third anniversary party on Saturday at Makahiki. Makahiki. Uh, Dr. Taco says, we released a new mug and everything. Well, I'm sorry for about that, Dr. Tiki. I wish that I lived closer to you guys' bar because that would have been really cool. Tell us about your mug. Tell us about the release. And is it something that people can go buy online now or is it sold out already? If you've got a link you want to share, you know that's okay with me. So that people can check it out. Especially Quinch Press and I, we tend to buy mugs and support different people making mugs, so. Uh, Monique says, whatever happened to Octo Tiki? I thought that was our first. Well, it's our, it is our first design. Um, Octo Tiki just kind of got pushed to the back burner simply because, you know, other people came forward and wanted to make other mugs. So I think we probably have, we'll have a stream where we see another mug before Octo Tiki. But Octo Tiki will probably come out after Witch Doctor's Potion. That would be my guess right now. But I know all the all the time and effort is going into the Witch Doctor's Potion right now, as far as like manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. So until that one's done, I don't think anything else will move forward. Um, and I think if Witch Doctor's Potion sells really good, really well, that that will help. Um, Octo Tiki and some of the other stuff I'm working on come to fruition. But yes, it is it is one that I would like to see move forward as well. And it was definitely our first design on the stream, so hopefully we can get... You know, we had talked about kickstarting that, but um, now that we have some production partners working with us on um, Witch Doctor's Potion, you know, my, my hope is that Everything goes really well with that one, and then we'll just move on and keep making more with them. So that's that's the current idea, at least. Um, they seem to really, really be savvy and know what they're doing, and they've produced or released a lot of mugs over the years. And so uh, my experience with them has been really, really positive so far. And hopefully it will continue to be so. Because I definitely like to like to do more but you know when you holding it in, in your hand and seeing that it's real is definitely uh, it's got me hyped up so there's there's more in the pipeline for sure and the octo tiki is definitely on my mind as well as it should be um let's see dr jaco d says the new mug is not on the site yet Quinch Press says, I had three drinks off the menu at Hale Pale, and one was off an old menu. I had the Pole Star, which was strong rum, uh, lime, vanilla, and anise. Had the Sleeping Lotus, um, which was gin, citrus, orange bitters. The Signal Fire, which was overproof rum, citrus, and cream of coconut with peach and cinnamon. Wow, those all sound really good. That last one, the Sleeping Lotus especially. Uh, Dr. Taco MD says, we do have one of our mugs on our website. This new one is with Ken Ruzik by Tiki Farm. Oh, nice. Tiki Farms who, who made the one that I was just showing. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Taco says the new one's called the Inferno Skull. Ooh, I like that name. That's 
really cool. Well, I look forward to seeing that. And, uh, you know, next week, feel free or whenever you guys have it on your website, you know, feel free to come on, share a link in the chat because uh, that's not spam. That's something people want to see. So you have, a, you have an open invitation to do so. Um, Quinch Press says, um, I didn't get the name of the drink off the old menu, but it had Batavia Iraq, coconut, apricot, lime, uh, something I can't read, jasmine water, and that was probably my favorite. Well, it sounds good. It sounds very good. Just starting to do a little bit of shading on this guy. We'll kind of give him some depth and some form here. Uh, Dr. Taco MD says the one on our site is our PNG drum mug. That sounds good. Uh, just sold out of our Tiki Diablo design mugs, though. Uh, Quinch says, I like the one that's on your site, Dr. Taco MD, and he put a link to it. So if you want to check that one out, definitely click that link. Support Dr. Taco MD in the Inferno Room. Let them know you care. Let them know you're a Tiki fan. Tell them you heard it here on Tiki Tuesday. Straight from Dr. Taco MD's mouth to your ears and hopefully into your Tiki mug collection, right? That's what we want to hear. Quench press redeemed to hydrate. Oh, I might need to refill for that quench. Number two, cheers to Quench Press. I'm kind of surprised you haven't seen Catherine and Whitney tonight. Should I be concerned? Did they tell us that they were going to be gone? I also noticed that like Tomcat never came back after our break, which is kind of sad. We miss Tomcat. Tomcat, we miss you! We miss you, Tomcat. Uh... So what did you guys think of the new iPhone thing today? It didn't seem like the most exciting announcement ever. But I have to admit, I'm still rocking an old like iPhone 10 and uh, 10s or something. And when the pandemic hit, I just kind of refused to upgrade, you know, and and the 10s had the the 2x zoom that you had to get the like XL model after that to get but now apparently all the pro models will have it regardless of size. So that may be the thing that gets me to upgrade. We'll see. I figure I'm like, what, three, three or four models behind on the phone now. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it. It, it looks, I mean, the new, the new camera system alone, like makes me want it. So it is kind of funny that we call them smartphones because it's more like they're just smart cameras, right? They're like really smart cameras that have like some extra features and stuff. They just happen to also like have phone technology and text technology, but it seems like it's the camera features that they're always trying to sell. Uh, Quinch says, I didn't even know it was today, but I'm an Android user. Yeah, it wasn't that exciting an announcement. I mean, it wasn't one of those like Apple events where everyone's like, oh my gosh, my mind is blown. It was more like, 
here's some incremental upgrades. Everything's faster. Everything has more storage. Everything works better. Everything has more pixels and longer battery life. And it costs the same as it did before, so you get more for the same amount. So, you know, that's fine. They can't all be like earth shattering, mind bending events. I'm okay with that. And we don't have we don't have Steve Jobs here anymore to wow us, you know, so But it was good. I mean, I just listened to it while I was doing some other things and I was really hoping they were going to announce a new iPad Pro, but they announced just a new iPad and iPad mini, but not a new Pro. So my Pro is like five years old, going on six years old. And I'm kind of ready to upgrade it, but I don't want to upgrade and then like the very next week or something, a new model comes out, you know? So I've been kind of just trying to time it right to wait until they actually announce a new one, but because you know it's like you can you can lose the iPad lottery pretty big if you if you do an upgrade and then like the very next week or the very next month they come out with a new model and you're like, well, I could have got like double everything for the same price. So I just try to pay attention to those like upgrade cycles and stuff so I don't get screwed, or at least not as much. This guy's starting to look pretty cool. Uh, Monique says, my eyelids are getting super heavy, so I'm going to run. Have a great stream. Thank you, Monique. Thanks for cheering earlier. Thanks for buying the uh, Back to the Future artwork. I'm glad it arrived safely to your house. I really appreciate your support in everything, and I hope you have a wonderful night with Tiki Dreams. See you next time. And cheers to you, Monique. Tiki Dreams. We should all be so lucky to have Tiki Dreams, right? Little. Maybe I should rewrite that poem, the Twas the Night Before Christmas, but make it about Tiki stuff. That'd be kind of funny. Maybe that's what we need. We need like our own like tiki Christmas holiday. Can we get the greeting card manufacturers on board with that? Some sort of cool tiki holiday. That would be fun. I'd be I'd be into that. Mobile Mollusk, thanks for joining us tonight. Good to see you. Drawing a little tiki idol here tonight. From the grass skirt in San Diego. Thanks for following, really appreciate it. You guys, uh, who's watching Ted Lasso out there, huh? Who's who's keeping up with that? I, uh, for everyone who said it was too happy cheery, I think the most recent episodes will prove you wrong. We've definitely seen a little more struggle and strife coming into the world of Ted Lasso. Uh, Mobile Mala says, hey, watching over on Facebook, wanted to stop in and say hello here. Thank you so much. Thanks for jumping over here to Twitch and saying hi. Thanks for watching the stream. I hope you are enjoying a tiki cocktail and enjoying the tiki artwork tonight. Cheers to you, Mobile Mollusk. Mmm, man, that's tasty. You gotta have yourself a tropical drink once in a while. Otherwise, you're just missing out on life, you know what I'm saying? Quinch Press says, I was watching right before I got on. I paused with 10 minutes left in the episode. 
So you're that means you're one ahead of me because I haven't watched whatever they've done this week. Uh, Mobile Mollusk says, I've been enjoying tiki lol. That's funny. Well, what kind of tea in your key are you enjoying? Is it a, uh, an Earl Grey, a breakfast blend, maybe a jasmine tea? What are you into there? What, what gets your tea juices flowing? Vanilla almond black tea. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds really good. I'm a, I'm a fan of stuff like that. Vanilla and almond? Yes. Count me in on that. Yeah, I was so disappointed by, um, what is it, Payway. They used to have, I think it was a black tea with maybe like an orange zest or orange citrus or something blend. But it was, it was unsweetened. And then they would have um, their green tea. I forget what's in their green tea, but it has some extra flavor too. And I would always get the black tea. It was so good. And then now, at least the one by us, they've switched to where they have, they still have the green tea. I forget what flavors, but it's got something sweet in it that's a little overpowering. And they got rid of their black tea and they just have like sweet tea, like Southern style sweet tea. And I'm like, this is Arizona. We don't, we don't do that here. What do you, what? Especially not in like a Chinese restaurant. Like what, what the heck? Anyway, disappointed. Disappointed. I mean, first of all, if you're walking into a Chinese restaurant and you're trying to get like sweet tea, you're sort of missing the point of tea in a Chinese restaurant. In my opinion. Like, I think you're like a little clueless at that point. Um... Quinch says, I'm drinking straight rum, Worthy Park Pot Still Rum. Worthy Park Pot Still Rum, aged 10 years, and Madeira cask. Ooh, or Madeira cask. Yes, Madeira. I love that. That sounds really good. Uh, Mo Mollusk is like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, Quinch Press says, Ted Lasso would not approve of the tea drinking. That's right. He'd be like, bleh. <laughs> Mollusk is like, ooh, rum. Uh, Quinch says, I'm just having a little, I'm going out to a Tiki Tuesday night at the Ostrich or uh, in downtown Chandler. Oh, the Ostrich. I haven't had that one. And Momol says, oh, fun. Where's, uh, we'll have to go to that one sometime, Quinch. I was actually just thinking the other day, I was like, gosh, Quinch Press and I, we have to catch up so much. We should, um, maybe we should try to put something together next week. Because um, Christy and I are going to be out of town for a few weeks at a tennis thing, so uh, we should try to make it happen before I leave if we can. That would probably be the smart thing to do. I don't know if you guys can, if the microphone's picking up the music or not, but I'm having to play the uh, royalty free tiki music of all the problems that Twitch has had with uh, takedown notices and stuff lately. It's okay, but it's not nearly as good as the real thing. We all know the real, the real good tiki music, you know. Uh, Quinch says, the ostrich is good, but we need to go to highball first, dinner at Bacanora, and then highball would be ideal. Is all that out your way, Quinch? I can, I can probably make that happen. I just have to uh, pace myself up if I'm gonna have an hour drive home, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Mobile Wallace says, the music is nice. Oh good, I'm glad to hear that. Well, you know, I mean, I'm such a fan of like, quote unquote real tiki stuff, like, you know, Arthur Lehman and a lot of those like 
hi-fi composers from the 50s and stuff. So, you know, these are a lot of like kind of sound alike kind of stuff. So I'm glad that it works out okay for you. But like we can't even do our Gilligan's Island theme song anymore, which is really sad because that was always that was always fun. A fun part of Tiki Tuesday, but apparently all the lawyers discovered Twitch and they're all coming after all the streamers and stuff, which is kind of silly. Cause I'm pretty sure that you know my Twelve dollars a month that I'm making off of Twitch is not bankrupting any uh, any musicians. But meanwhile, I saw that Apple had developed some new tech inside of uh, Shazam that will be able to listen to G DJ sets and pick up each artist that's played in the mix, and then make sure that they get like their correct royalties and stuff. And I was like, that's freaking amazing right there. I'm guessing if that's if the DJ uses Apple Music, they didn't say that, but that would be my guess. But, um, and I don't think it costs the DJ anything. I don't think the DJ doesn't pay those royalties. Apple pays the royalties to the artist just because of the fact that their music was played. So it's kind of cool. And I think that's a little bit of a better approach than a bunch of lawyers just suing people who have Twitch channels and stuff. And, you know, look, I'm sure there's people taking advantage. And, you know, there's one person out there probably who really deserves to be sued. But then, you know, everyone's paying the price for that person's jackassery, you know. So it's kind of, it's kind of not cool, man. It's not cool. Uh... Quinchpro says, uh, Central Phoenix, 13th Avon Grand. Oh, 7th and McDowell. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Quinch is like, no, not Gilligan. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, well, and if I sing it, we don't always get flagged, but if they pick up any of the original music in the background, then we get flagged, so. And it's like a three strikes and you're out thing, so what are you gonna do? Uh, Quench Press Redeem to Hydrate. Cheers to you, Quench. Hopefully you guys can see we've got the, the mermaid mug tonight. Look at that. Oh, there it is. Mermaid. Cheers, Quench Press. Mmm. And um, I'll tell you what, third stream of the day. I was worried I was going to be a little too low energy, but I'm trying to keep the energy up tonight. What do we think about this this tiki art tonight, guys? I gotta tell you, I kind of like this composition with the the big fireplace. Probably change the girl around a little bit, but I think this could make a good print. I pretty much this is the same girl we did on the uh, the kahiki print, so we'd want to change her up a little bit. But I think it could work. I think it's kind of a fun one. Guys, let me know what you think. Uh, let's get something really light here. Uh, Quinch Press says, you'll need to put on the headphones to listen and then sing it. Maybe, maybe that's what we could do. <laughs> I don't know, we just have to see if they, if they ding us or not. I know that uh, Twitch sent a thing out, you know, a couple months ago and they said, just pull down all your videos. Or like, just don't, do not let any of your videos stay live after you stream. Just pull them all down because the lawyers don't, you know, they're clearly they're not listening to the streams in real time. They're just going through people's catalogs and then suing them. And so, uh, and the irony is, is that everything I've streamed is on YouTube and nothing happens there other than they're just like, you can't monetize this. I'm like, okay. I don't care. I'm not making any money anyway. This is all just for fun, you know? So it's kind of funny. Hey, Mobile Mollusk, thanks for hanging out. Uh, oh, great. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for the follow. And, uh, you know, come back next time for Tiki Tuesday and give us an update on you and, like, what tiki drinks you like, what music you like, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll get to hang out and see you more. But until next time, 
Have a good night and have some tiki dreams. All right, so what else do we want to do with this guy? We got, we put a little bit more detail into this one. Uh, kind of like the idea of this fire, this fire in here though is like really like glowing. I think if we do like a real, like a full color print of this, it could look really dramatic with that firelight. Oh, you have a great night too. Um, Momo Mom says, uh, Molly, who met you at Star Wars Celebration and tried to return your wood art stand. Oh my gosh, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Molly, really appreciate that. Yeah, hello to you in Chicago, all the way from here in Arizona. Well, thanks again for hanging out. Really good to see you, and we hope to see you again uh, next week. What a small world. What a small world. Um, so what she's talking about is we have these like wooden uh, art bins that you put the art prints in at the Comic Cons and stuff. And unfortunately, I hate to be wasteful, but it's just cheaper to buy a new one from Amazon than to ship it home from the Comic Con. I know, it's horrible, right? But that's just the reality. So um, I usually try to donate them to one of the other galleries. And at this particular convention, I think because it was in Chicago, it wasn't on one of the coast, everyone's kind of in the same bag. And so nobody wanted to pay to ship it back. So we, uh, uh, I don't know if I set it next to the dumpster or in the dumpster, but Molly, very nicely, it had my business card, I think, taped onto it, brought it back and said, oh, hey, someone tried to throw your thing away. Here it is back. And then I was all embarrassed because I'm like, thanks, but I'm actually not taking it with me. So, you know, it is what it is. But that's the that's the Comic-Con life right there when you, you uh, have to make those really tough decisions sometimes about like, I paid money for this thing and I hate to get rid of it, but it doesn't make sense to take it back with me. So it's kind of funny. I totally forgot about that too. All right, there's 20%. Where's our 30 at? 30, there we go. Let's see if we can get a little, a little more depth out of this. Let's get a little bit more highlights and shadows in here. Maybe a little bit of texture. Uh, oh, Mobile Mall says, it was fun connecting and it was great seeing your art during the convention. So good. Oh, thank you so much, Molly. Thank you. Really appreciate that. You know, that's why I do these streams. It's just connect with everybody out there who's a collector or a fan or maybe also in the industry. We can share a drink and share some art and catch up with each other and connect in a way that we, we couldn't connect over just Facebook or Twitter or something like that. So Very nice. Uh, what do we think, Quench? What do, you, what do we think about this one? I've kind of had fun with this one. I think I might, might try to turn this one into a, develop it out into like a full full scale print. Might be it. Gets to get the right colors on there with the fireplace and everything. I think that could look pretty cool. Quinch just says, I like it. Yeah, I think it's a cool one. I think, especially with the, We've got like the wooden beams and then we've got the, the tiki idol. There's some there's some fun stuff going on there for sure. Well again, I said this was my third stream of the day, so we might only go 90 minutes tonight instead of two hours, but we'll work on this a little bit more. I'm gonna give this guy some like the idea that his eyes are kind of like glowing with tiki magic. He's got the tiki power in him. So Quinch, other than um, Ted Lasso, what are you into right now? I was talking earlier before you got here that um, I watched The Vault 
on Netflix, like a heist film. That was really cool. And uh, I've been watching Behind the Attraction on Disney Plus about the behind the scenes of some of the rides and stuff. It's really cool. I really enjoyed the one on. Um, well, I've liked them all. So, like the 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 one on Jungle Cruise was way better than I imagined, and the one on Haunted Mansion was incredible. I've watched so many behind the scenes things on Haunted Mansion that I kind of thought I knew it all, but this gave me new stuff, and especially about some of the international parks and stuff. So, um, if you guys haven't checked that out, Behind the Attraction on Disney Plus, really really good, and they're short. I think they're like forty or forty five minutes a piece. Um, so it's not a big commitment and like, you know, they're pretty lighthearted. So like, I'll just watch one at lunch or something like that. It's not a big deal, um, but really fun, really fun. And I do want to remind everybody that um, if you're looking to upgrade your decor for Halloween, I have a bunch of new Halloween art, Halloween and horror and stuff like that. Um, on the website. So I'm going to put the link in the chat right now. It's octopolis.com. Uh, take a look, check it out. We've also still got the double feature deal going on for the DeLorean and Back to the Future artwork. So if you buy the DeLorean print, you get the Back to the Future print for free. Um, quite a few people have taken me up on that one. And the people who've received it have been like really blown away by it. So I think it's one where like seeing it like postage stamp size on your screen doesn't really do it justice. But when you get the full print, People are just like, holy crap, this is so much cooler than I thought it was going to be. So, um, you know, if that's the kind of thing that appeals to you, definitely check it out. Uh, but the Halloween art, we've got some some cool new pieces, um, including like Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Shining, American Horror Story, War of the Worlds, and more. So, um, you know, definitely if you want to do some cool Halloween decor, check it out. Uh, pick your favorites. I think we've got a deal there that if you... Uh, if you buy three, you can save 20%, or if you're a Collector's Club member, you've got a special code to save 20%, so definitely check that out. Uh, Quinch Press says, I've been watching a lot less TV lately. Agreed, me too. Uh, when I have, as bad as it is, I got hooked on Bar Rescue, starting the final season of Lucifer 2. Well, you know, Quinch, it makes sense that you're watching less television because, uh, it's, you know, you've been back out there. You've been back out going to the tiki bars and the craft cocktail bars and I'm assuming some live music events like what what kind of live music events have you been going to um, I have a friend who's a pilot and he was supposed to fly uh, I think some of the members of Poison to some event and um, apparently I don't know somebody in the in the crew no, not the not the plane crew the Poison crew uh, one of their you know staff members or something got, got COVID or at least got a positive test and uh, they had to like delay all that stuff but it's a uh, it's crazy times out there still you know like every time we think oh this could be over things might get back to normal and there's always some new twist or turn that, that pops up you know all right well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking the look of this one. I think it was a fun sketch. It's a great, fun Tiki Idol. I mean, he's just he's got so much personality. I like zoom in there and let's see if we can see. Uh, it's hard to get it in the camera, but uh, you can see it. Tiki, Tiki. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we'll probably turn this one into a full color print sooner or later. Um, I'm still working on some Ghostbusters art for October, so we have to stay tuned for that one. Uh, but if Quinch doesn't have anything to chime in with, I'm going to probably run the credits, and then we'll give Quinch time to find us someone to raid tonight. So again, this Tiki Idol, this is from the Grass Skirt in San Diego. Uh, they're a Tiki Bar in the Pacific Beach region, and they've been around since November 2016. Kind of a hidden speakeasy style tiki bar with some food and cocktails and stuff. So if you were in the San Diego area, definitely check them out because I sure wish I could go check them out. Quinch Press says they were good. His endorsement means a lot. You guys know that he runs the Quinch Press Instagram account. So if you want to catch up on bars and cocktails and bartenders and stuff, check out Quinch Press on Instagram. And Quinch Press says... 
this past week I saw Half Alive on Friday, Squeeze on Saturday. I knew you were going to be at Squeeze. I heard First Wave talking about Squeeze, and I was like, oh, Quench is going to be there. I just know it. Um, and then I saw City in Color with Dizzy last night. I was supposed to see Atlas Genius at Valley. Oh, with the Valley Below on Thursday, but Atlas had a visa issue. Oh, my gosh, the tour got canceled. I would love to see Atlas Genius and the Valley Below. So what's going on with the Valley Below now that the tour's canceled? Are they just SOL? Do they not? Because, I mean, I love both of those bands. That was going to be Thursday, and you were going to leave me hanging, and I, I would I would go see that. I would totally go see that. Well, it's canceled now, so it doesn't matter. Boo! Cancellations. Um, well, that does sound really exciting. Let me take just a moment and uh, run the credits, because we know Monique cheered earlier, um, and we had some new followers. So let's just hang out for a few seconds, and then we'll come back and uh, do a raid. Dun, 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 dun. All right, are we ready for the credits? Here we go. All right, those were some really good credits. That was a good one. It's been a good night. You guys, this is my third stream of the day. I'm feeling a little wiped out, but I really appreciate everybody hanging out tonight. Hopefully I kept the energy level up enough for you. Um, had a great time drawing this tiki. Had some fun cocktails. Really nice to catch up with everybody. Uh, Quinch says, I thought I'd let you know about it. Yeah, you did. I remember you telling me. I just didn't know it was like this week. But it doesn't matter because it's gone. So um, let's do a raid. We're going to do a raid. Let's see. Quinch gave me somebody to raid here. Let me see if I can get it to come up. There we go. Oh, I like this person's channel. It looks like they're drawing monsters and stuff tonight. So that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, Quinch, reading to hydrate. Hey, cheers to all of you guys. So again, thanks for your support. Um, thanks for the follows. Thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon as well. Thanks for just buying my art and for just hanging out on Tiki Tuesday, right? It's a fun thing to do. So cheers to you guys. Mmm. So good. Get your likes ready. Get your emotes ready. Get ready to cheer. Get ready to comment. We're going to raid. Stay on target, and I'll see you guys next time.